Well, you're here, so you're planning on watching what is the longest video I've ever uploaded to YouTube. But I'm going to warn you, the sound in the lounge is loud. You can hear Nikki and Jimmo just fine, but if you're going to complain about the sound, don't even bother to watch. I'm just going to tell you now, the generator's loud in the trailer. There's some vibration going on, but... I'm telling you, this is an amazing over an hour of hanging out with Nikki Bonifant and Jim Oberhofer, my two crew chiefs. And you're going to learn some history about these two guys. Back to the warning, though. The generator is loud and there's some vibration and it's noisy. So if you're going to complain about the sound, just go to a different video. Appreciate you guys watching the ones that do. Let's get into this interview with Nikki and Jimmo. And we will win. And uh, that's, that's that, there's no excuse for not not winning. So um, I mean that's just all there is to it. So. He's just a good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. That's live. You know that's going right on the content. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jimmo. So everybody's been wearing me out because we ain't been in the lounge yakking, but uh, that's just part of the deal now. I'm just telling y'all now that's just part of the deal because it's busy up here. But all that aside, because people have been wearing me out asking, who is that set beside you that we've been trying to get to do this for the last, since November? Who, who is that? Well, that's my brother from another mother, the Italian stallion, Dick Bonifani Jr. <laughs> hey, what's up? All right, so I'm going to continue with you before I head to Nikki. So how, how do you know Nikki? Obviously, that's going way back, but how do you know Nikki? Well, I've known Nikki for, I think we're going on like, I think like 36, 37 years or whatever. <laughs> it's been a long time. It, and I met, and how I met Nikki is the funniest thing ever. And um, I was working, you know, working for Scott Coletta and Connie Coletta back then. And, and uh, Scott goes to me, we were at Englishtown uh, Raceway Park at the Summer Nationals back then. It was like 87 or 8 or 9. Or Something nine. like that, right? And, and Scott goes, hey, you uh, come down to Bonifani's trailer with me. I want to. I want to introduce you to Nick Bonifani Jr. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd never met, you know, Nicky at the time. And he goes, it's his birthday, and his, and his dad got a stripper for him. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So <laughs> so anyway, Scott and I go down there. And, and uh, back then, you know, uh, Nicky's dad, Nick Cedar, he had the, uh, the old chaparral-type trailer and stuff. And we go walking in the trailer, and there's Nicky sitting there in a chair and there's a stripper doing a dance for him for his birthday and Scott goes he goes uh hey Nikki this is Jim O Jim O this is Nikki and that's how we met <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was awesome all right Nikki so that was the short version of y'all meeting how did uh how did drag racing become part become your life really and truly how did that Give us the uh, short version of your life, basically. Oh God, my, my dad was the problem. Like he, you know, my dad had a bunch of different cars, and uh, they they were all in the garage when I was growing up. So I just wound up, uh, you know, that was my whole life. I mean, I wanted to go go home and uh, sit in the race car when I was a kid, you know, little kid, and uh, work on it when I, work on it when I was when I got you know when I got older and. Um, I mean, I just never did anything else but work on race cars my whole life. So, so you never wanted to drive? Nah, no. I actually, uh, I did did make some runs in a uh, super comp car. Uh, uh, God, back when I was working for Bruce Lit. Um, but uh, it was cool. But I'm not. I, I'm more of a mechanical uh, kind of guy, and I really want to uh, make the cars perform. So. So we've got a ton of people that watch our channel that know drag racing, and they will know your last name and associate you with the clutch disc business. 
Yeah. How did that become the family business? So that's that's not really a long story, but but I can do. I'll give you the really super short version. My dad, uh, you know, as cheap as he was back then, he got <laughs> he got a clutch disc sponsor from Ray Bestis, and uh, he he became friends with that that uh, guy named Frank Slocum from that company, and uh, um, he worked his way up through the uh, ranks there and got to the president and. Uh, and uh, basically told him he could sell a lot of clutch disc. And uh, uh, they gave him clutch disc for his race car uh, as a sponsorship. And my dad um, started going around the pits and talking to different racers. And uh, Austin Coyle and Connie Coletta, were, they were some of the first people that he talked with. And he says, hey, I can sell you, you know, a lot of clutch disc for a good amount of, you know, good uh, on a discount, basically. And that's that's how the clutch business started, and uh, you know my dad was responsible for that, and he uh, he built a pretty uh, good good uh, consistent business uh, that made a lot of uh, made a lot of money for him and for our family, and then uh, made him a lot of cash too on the side. So. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I know I'm behind the camera. Those are stories we'll get into as the years go on here. <laughs> Those are some good stories. Yeah. <laughs> And we won't even get into the story that the first time that uh, I raced, other than the, my very first race, was in your dad's car. Yeah. So, yeah, whoop. which was a Coletta car, yeah. and it was actually the one that uh, that Connie drove at the time. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, my dad bought it, and he he raced uh, with John Carey for a little yeah. bit, and uh, that was about the last couple couple years he raced, I guess. Yeah. So, what was your first job away from dad? Uh, I worked for Roland Leal uh, on the Hawaiian Punch, uh, funny car, and uh, Jim White was actually driving it. No kidding. What year was that? Do you know? Uh, 1989, I guess it was. Um, you know, I worked for my dad for for a long time, and of course, we didn't get along that good ever, um, just because you know I was a punk kid, and he was my dad, right? They were so, too much alike. Yeah, yeah. So we got in fights a lot over <laughs> anything. It could didn't matter what it was. Um, but, uh, you know, I decided I'm going to go find a job. So, uh, uh, you know, so I called up, believe it or not, Del Warsham and, uh, you know, on the dial phone or the push button, you know, and he says, yeah, my, he goes, my, my dad's truck's out there, the Tinker Toy Lounge, uh, Tinker, Toy, Tinker Toy truck. He says, you can ride with Big Ted and Dennis out to Denver. So I got... Got a ride up there and got in the truck with those guys and took a ride to Denver and went out and looked for a job. Never worked, you know, my dad at the time, they didn't run that race. So um, I walked around the pits and I knew Wes Cerny from talking to him on the phone. And Wes had just started with tuning the Hawaiian punch car. So I uh, talked to Wes and I got to meet Roland and they hired me and I worked there for probably three months maybe that's about, about all I made it I mean we set the thing on fire pretty much every run back then um, and uh, you know it was close to burning Jim White's eyebrows off every run but but uh, Wes was he was getting that thing dialed in and it eventually ran really well uh, especially uh, you know the last couple races I was there with him and then uh, you know they did go on to set set some national records with that car uh, but but uh, you know that was my first job away from my dad, and then, it, then I then I pretty much uh, wound up going back. You know, my dad decided he was going to pay me a little more money to watch over his stuff, so I think he gave me like a hundred bucks more a week. <laughs> Man, that's way more yeah. money than my dad paid yeah. me. Yeah, I think back then I was making about like four hundred a week, so well, that's pretty yeah, good it was for big, '89. Big money for '89. Yeah. yeah, it was on, but it was all cash. You know, so. Well, well, yeah, that's how your dad operated. <laughs> yeah. So from there, I'm trying to make the, the steps, and I know it's a long career, but from there, where'd you go? Oh, uh, man, I went back to my dad, and then I worked there for a little bit, and uh, I guess that was like, uh, you know, in, 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 you know, up until like the 90s, like the early 90s, and uh, uh, I worked on Dell Worship's car. Uh, he won Rookie of the Year in 91, and... Uh, you know, I was looking for a full-time job, and, and they didn't know how much they were going to raise. So, um, you know, Scott and I were friends, Scott Coletta, and, 
you know, I knew Jim O, and, and uh, uh, at the time Maynard Yanks was work, uh, working there. He was uh, Bruce Larson's crew chief the year before, and uh, you know, Scott said, "Hey, just come on over here and work over here. We're going to run the old man's car again, which you know, Connie's car." And so I started there in '91, and I worked for the Coletas for uh, God. It was up until '90, the end of '96. Um, so Scott won two championships. Uh, in that time, I got to work with Jimmo, which was awesome. Um, uh, worked with John Overhoffer. John, you know, yeah. obviously Jimmo's little brother, um, and uh, a couple other guys that were pretty good guys, you know. Um, and uh, the the guy that changed my whole life, I guess, really was Dick LaHaye. So, um, you know, Dick made me really want to be. A, <clears throat> he made me want to be able to be a crew chief someday, and. Uh, you know, so so Jimbo and I are, you know, we're crew chiefs. We've been crew chiefs together, not together. Uh, Jimbo's been my boss, my buddy, uh, general manager, everything. So, um, you know, I guess basically, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with a guy named Dick LaHaye, and then of course Connie Coletta. Um, Connie Connie really took good care of us. He gave us the. Uh, you know the budgets to be able to go out and and have these crew chiefs work to race for championships and then uh, you know helped us learn. Connie has and Scott and, and uh, Dick LaHaye and these guys really helped us get to where we are in our drag racing careers. So when y'all first started working together, Jimbo, what were what were you doing on the team? Do you remember? Uh, so so back then I I had just started learning to do the cylinder heads. And um, you know, I, I'd been doing the, the bottom end, and then uh, and then Scott let me, you know, start building short blocks. My our, our good old buddy, one of my longtime friends, Randy Green, he taught me how to do the bottom end. He taught me how to build short blocks back then. And um, so, you know, around that time, my brother came to work at, at Coletta's, and so he started doing things. That I was doing, and I wanted to learn how to do the cylinder head. So, so Scott was like, you know, all right, no problem. So I started, you know, learning how to do the cylinder heads back then. And um, but, you know, it was it was cool when Nikki come to work for us um, back then. You know, it was we immediately like when when we first met. You know, even though there was a stripper there, it's like we we connected, you know, really well. It was like, man, this guy's like my type of guy. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a uh, you know a good guy, a hard worker. You know, loves drag racing. You know, his dad raced, you know, forever. My dad raced, and and um, it's like we have like similar backgrounds, right. and that's why I always got along with Scott so well. Because I remember when I come to work for Coletta's way back when, every everybody would always go, "Oh, Scott's really tough, but Connie's even tougher and stuff." And and when I got there, and I'm like, "Well, they ain't so bad." I go, "I said my dad was harder on me than Connie could ever be, right?" <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, so I think like each of our dads like prepared us for for, for working Connie with Connie and <laughs> stuff, and um, you know, so. We worked together, and, and you know, at the end of the '92 season, um, towards the end of the '92 season, the last race we all worked together was at the U.S. Nationals. And Connie, at the time, he he had started um, uh, buying the 747s, so he bought his first three 747s, and he came to us and he says, "Look, guys, I really need to pay attention." business I just spent a lot of money with these 747s and you know I'm, I'm not going to be able to run the car for the rest of the year and we were like oh man that's that's a bummer you know like because because we really enjoyed what we were doing back then working with Connie and Scott and um, so you know we decided because you know Nikki's a, a racer and you know, I'm a racer. Connie offered us jobs to stay there within the in the company. You know, me, I was, you know, since I grew up in a paint body shop, I knew how to like paint and stuff. So, you know, they offered me, you know, the, the uh, 
opportunity to go work in the paint shop. And I'm like, man, I really, I said, I, I didn't want to like paint airplanes, airplanes and all that stuff. I, I did it and, and, uh, and, and it was an experience for me, but that's not what I really wanted to do. I really wanted to race. And I told Connie that, and he, he was cool that he, he understood that. So, you know, towards the end of 92, we, you know, Nikki, you know, work, uh, with some guys and, and you know like I was helping Maynard Yanks I went on, to help uh, Chuck Scusa, Mitchell's car. That's right, you yeah. know his car. And um, was um, that with Lance? No, it was way before Lance. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know we kind of you know finished out the the '92 season. My brother he went to work for Fast Freddy Neely and Ronnie Swearingen, and and um, we kind of finished the, the year out and. We're all like in limbo, really, what we're doing because we really liked working for Connie and Scott, but the way that it was told to us is like they were never going to race again full time and never do anything. And um, next thing you know, like after the first of the year, um, the call started. Scott's like calling all of us up, and you know, they had just hired Dick LaHaye. And uh, Scott's like, you need to get your ass back here because I was going to go work for Chuck Etchell's and Mater Yanks because that's what, it, like, it was going to work out okay for me. And, um, you know, what were you going to do? I remember you I was going to work for Scusa. Uh, yeah, and and I was actually helping uh, Richard Hartman was actually running his own car again um, after he had driven for my dad. And uh, I was going to go help him at the West Coast races and then work for Scusa on the east coast yeah it was it was funny because i had like i was going to move to harrisburg pennsylvania because that's where edgel's shop was at the time and that's where maynard lived and i'll never forget um my wife tammy and i and, and my brother was there with me because my brother was going to go work for chuck edgel's as well and i mean i literally had been there not even a week and Scott calls up and he goes, hey, he goes, you need to come back here. Um, I said, okay. Uh, I said, what's up? And he goes, the old man's hired Dick LaHaye. He says, you need to come back here. And I said, damn it, Scott. I said, we literally talked about this like two weeks ago before I left and I told you like what is the deal because I really wanted to stay there and um, but I wanted to go racing with I didn't want to paint airplanes and he goes no we're not racing the old man's done like we'll, we might race like two or three times a year or whatever well next thing you know like a week or two later it's like we're hiring LaHaye we're going to all these races we're going after it yeah the old man's not driving the old man's not it's just that's just the way it's gonna be. So he's like, "Oh, you gotta come back here," and and I'm like, "Man, I said I made a commitment to Maynard and to Chuck. I said I can't go back on that." And so I said, "Man, I don't know." I said, "I I need to think about this." So I hang up the phone. You know, back then we didn't have cell phones, so I just hang up the phone. And um, it ain't five minutes, and Scott calls back. Hey, you figure it out? What are you doing? I go, Scott, it's only been five minutes. Yeah, I know, but I need to know right now. And I'm like, man, Scott, I go, I, I don't know. I really need to think about this. He goes, where's Tammy at? I go, she's right here. He goes, let me talk to her. <laughs> and I go, all right. So I give the phone to Tammy and he starts talking to Tammy. And, and so then she hangs up the phone and Tammy's like, he really wants you to come back. And I go, well, what about my brother? <laughs> like, what's the deal? Like, nobody's saying anything about John O, right? So, so anyway, the phone rings again five minutes later, and I told Tammy, I go, you answer it. I said, I'm not talking to Scott right now. So she answers the phone, and she's like, hello, Scott. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she goes, oh, well, it was Connie. And he goes, Tammy, that's Connie. <laughs> he goes, Yo, know, you need to talk to Jim O. He just needs to come back here. And she she goes, well, here, why don't you tell him? So I get on the phone, and he's like, 
Joe, he says, you need to come back here. He says, we're doing this deal with LaHaye. We're getting all this stuff, you know, together. We're going to go after it. We're going to, like, try to run good and win races in a championship. I go, okay. I go, this all sounds really good. I go, but what about my brother? He goes, well, he can come along, too. And I go, okay. And I said, all right. I said, just give me a minute to think about this, okay? So I, I got off the phone, and I called Maynard and stuff, and I go, Maynard, I said, I got a problem. He says, what's that? And I go, Connie's hiring Dick LaHaye, and they're blowing my phone up, and they want me and John to come back there and work. And um, Maynard goes, and, and Maynard was an awesome guy, really was. He goes, Jim, oh, he goes, as much as I would love to have you here, and, you know, I think we, we, we can really do well together, he says, I think in the best interest of you and your fam you know, you know, your family, me and Tammy at the time, because Ashley O wasn't born yet, you should go back. I, I said, are you sure? And he goes, yes. He goes, my selfish side says I want you here, but I really feel you need it. I, I would be doing you a disservice if you didn't go back. He goes, if they're hiring Dick LaHaye, and he says, you know Connie, if Connie just lets him run the car, he goes, you guys are going to do something special. And I said, okay. So I called Connie back and I said, all right, I'm in. And he says, all right, good. He goes, when can you be here? And I, I said, well, what, when do I need to be here? And he goes, well, just get here. And we'll put you on one of the cargo planes, you and your brother, and we'll, we'll send you out to LA because that's where we're all meeting up. The, the rig's on its way out there and everything. I think Donnie Bender, Donnie, yeah, Donnie drove the rig Donnie. out there at the time. So, so anyway, you know, found out, you know, like, like, well, who else is going to be there? And, you know, well, we got Nikki coming back. We got you. We got your brother. And we got Bonnie Bender. And then Dickel Hayes got some guy. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. So my brother and I, like, we um, packed our stuff up, took my truck. We drove to Ypsilanti. We got on a freight plane and we went out to LAX, left my poor wife there, like, Hey, can you clean up our mess that we just made? <laughs> right. And so, but what was really cool is that Connie called back and he goes, he goes, Tammy O's got a job too. We'll figure something out. Because <laughs> she had worked there before right. doing all the PR and all that kind of stuff for Connie and Scott. And, um, you know, Connie like brought her back and like put her, I think it was in sales, you know, because uh, Tammy O and Scott worked together in sales. <laughs> at uh, Coletta Flying Services back then, or American International Airways, whatever it was back then. And, um, and it was cool. And when we, you know, started working on the car with LaHaye, and LaHaye was like, like, we always thought Connie was like this intimidating guy. And um, boy, when LaHaye was around, man, that was, was like, oh man, like LaHaye inherited a bunch of buffoons working on his car at the time. You know, me and my brother, Nikki and Tommy Bender. And he and, barely wanted to use any of the parts Connie had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was it was awesome. And uh, we did a lot of stuff. And, and Dick LaHaye just took charge of everything. And, you know, after a little bit, we knew it was going to be okay. And I think the thing that we, when we knew it was going to be okay, in 93 at the Winter Nationals, um, Bernstein crashed in the final round. I think it was against a motto, right? And um, he had the little, back when they had the little wheels on the tire, and, and Connie hated those things, right? So he calls up uh, LaHaye after the Winter Nationals, and he's telling LaHaye, you need to put the big wheels back on this thing. They act as rudders. You know, Bernstein couldn't drive that car. That's why he crashed it and whatever. And, and so LaHaye, like, you've got, like, two pretty strong personalities with Connie and with LaHaye. Both very, very smart guys, right? And um, LaHaye wanted no part of putting those big, right? 
All right, we had a battery die. So, Connie didn't want the uh, big wheels back on. I think that's where you were at. Yeah. yeah, so, so Dick LaHaye and Connie, they're kind of bickering back and forth about whether or not we should put the big wheels on Scott's car. And Dick LaHaye did not want any part of that. You know, because Connie and, you know, Dick o, they had like these very strong personalities and stuff. And, and uh, LaHaye didn't like changing things in midstream you know it's like we got a good car whatever so Nikki and I and my brother and Donnie we're all sitting there we're thinking about like uh, the year before when, yeah, when Connie hired Frank Bradley and, <laughs> and like, it lasted like two yeah. weeks yeah. we're like oh man LaHaye's gonna leave and we're, <laughs> we're screwed <laughs> all yeah, stuff. yeah. We, we, we started thinking of what our next jobs were gonna be oh yeah <laughs> yeah we were gonna work at like a water burger or yeah. something like that burger <laughs> so, so anyway, um, LaHaye put his foot down, and Connie, Connie says, "Okay, all right, I got, I got no problem with you doing this." And um, so when LaHaye came back and told us, "Like, no, we're all good with the little wheels until, you know, until told, Denver." Yeah, we put or Columbus. We put them yeah, on. Yeah, it was Dicko's idea, and Dicko, yeah. Dicko wanted to put them on, and. Uh, when we did, we also changed the stagger, you know, which, you know, the rollout was different. And yeah. The reaction time slowed way down. Um, the but car but the car down. ran about 500 quicker, I think, is what it amounted to. Yeah, it was quite a bit. Yeah, and um, so, but what was cool was Dicko only did it on his own terms. Like, in his mind, he didn't want to make a bunch of changes, but I believe that uh, to this day, and I think Jimbo and I, probably agree on this when Dick was ready for that change he knew what it was going to do um, and it wasn't necessarily just for the safety aspect it was because he felt that he could pick up a little bit of ET yeah. on that class on the class you know because everybody had the small tires with the uh, reverse stagger which was backwards you know the way the car twisted yep you know so um, when we, we made a big old change, and I guess I guess it was Columbus or whatever. I yeah. can't remember for sure, but it was right around Denver, Columbus, and and uh, you know we had a really good performing car then, and uh, and we were you know, I mean we definitely feared for our jobs the whole time because we never knew if it was going to be what, another Frank Bradley thing where you know Frank just decided he was mad because Con you know because Connie told him he wanted him to do something a certain way and Frank didn't. Frank was out of there. Frank just split. Frank Jim just, and Jim. Frank yeah. just they just it's like before the first qualified run of the Nationals. And, and it's like, I think at that time, it was too new for Connie to hire one of his buddies to be a crew chief of the car, you know, because Frank had his own team forever. And, and Connie had never really had anybody's, you know, like take over his operation. I mean, he had some great people working for him, you know, Larry Frazier, Ron Barrows, you know, a bunch of people over the years, but like he he was wanting to like turn over the reins to Frank, but he wasn't ready to turn it over. Yeah. And then I think it like it it helped both Frank and Connie moving forward. Yeah. You know, that Frank was able to go out and be a crew chief for somebody and then Connie, you know, he hired Dick Lay and and um, and he was good with it. You know, he let Dicko run the show, and uh, you know, Dicko taught us. You know, told us like when we we first all got together. He says, you know, uh, the first thing we're going to learn to do is we're going to we're going to learn how to race together. And he says, and uh, we're going to learn how to win together. We're going to learn how to lose together. And um, he was. I, I still think to this day he is like probably one of the most underrated crew chiefs in drag racing history. I don't think he gets enough credit for the things he done, he's done. I mean, he's got five world championships. Um, you know, with his own car, he had you know he was a world champion driver and a, and a, and a crew chief, and then. Um, you know, he won two championships with Scott and two championships with Larry Dixon. And uh, he, he, he was an amazing guy. And 
he he's a guy who can do the most with the least. Yeah, I yeah, I think you're right. And, and you know, he he was a really good teacher. Uh, I mean, he he made you believe in yourself. He made you think about everything you did. Um, uh, you know, he he told us. He said, "You guys are in charge of your own areas. You know, like you have to pay attention to your own things." And and you know, like everybody, like you know, the way he the way he wanted things done, um, he would always say, "Hey, if you see a better way, you come to me and we'll talk about it." You know, so he he was open to things. Uh, he knew how he wanted things and. I, like I said earlier, like I believe that, um, I mean, nothing, taking nothing away from Connie Coletta, but, uh, you know, Connie obviously funded our, even our careers as tuners, you know, um, because we both tuned, for, he tuned for Doug and I tuned for, for Dell, and, and, you know, when Jeff drove the car and uh, the DHL funny car, and, uh, and Alexis too, and Sean, so, um, Connie's, I burn up a lot of Connie's money, you know, so um, so I wouldn't even be where I am without Connie Coletta, but but as, as far as a mentor and a teacher, um, Dick LaHaye really, uh, he showed he showed me how to race, and I, and I, you know, I know he showed Jimbo how to race, and Jimbo and I, we share a lot of the same uh, philosophies about how to run a car and, and how to, how to deal with the guys, and just you know, how to enjoy yourself racing. Because one thing about Dick, I mean, he was intense, but we always could have a good laugh. And we always had a good, you know, we had a lot of camaraderie where the guys, we all got along. Like, I mean, and, you know, every single morning, uh, the whole time we worked with Dick LaHaye, he rode with us in the van and we went to breakfast. And that was what Dick wanted to do. And, and one time Dick let us pay for breakfast and every other time he bought us breakfast oh yeah and when we went to breakfast we weren't allowed to eat eggs benedict because one time we did and we were really stupid out there it was like we ate a, it was like we ate a can of dumbass yeah that's what he told us so but um but i mean seriously and to this day we still will not eat uh, any dumbass in the morning yeah, no, but i love eggs. we love eggs benedict but i'm afraid to eat it. right i understand yeah. so nikki you ended up leaving I guess before Jimbo left uh, the first time yeah like I say we're slowly making our way yeah so here. okay so uh, yeah I left and I went to Don Perrums um, uh, you know I had a burning desire for funny cars you know because I'm crazy and I I mean well that's what you grew up with well I mean yeah my dad had a funny car in the garage and uh, my whole life and I really wanted to go uh, I wanted to go be part of the funny car team and uh, um, it was hard for me to leave Scott and Dick and, and Jimmo and all you know and all the guys um, but I felt like for me it was a good opportunity to get myself out there uh, to be an assistant crew chief at the time not just like a you know a clutch dude or guy or a technician like today's so, yeah, yeah. but um, so I got you know I got I got in with Snake and uh, um, I got myself a job over there, and, and like uh, it was tough. I mean, it was a startup team. It was Copenhagen, uh, Ron Caps driving. I knew Ron, you know, pretty good. Uh, Ron never drove a funny car. Got to work with Tom Anderson for the first time, which you know he was at Coletta's and Jimbo got to work with him. And you know we used to call him Dumbo. So you know um, <laughs> Tom was a he was a character. I mean, honestly. Uh, uh, he wasn't a dumb guy, trust me, he was a pretty smart guy, he knew how to race a car, he wasn't a bad driver in his time, you know, he drove for Jim Wabat, um, but he was, you know, he, he was a practical joker, he was fun to be around once in a while, um, Snake didn't really like his humor, I guess, but, but for the most part, like, we did really terrible, I mean, we honestly did, so, you know, like, the first I don't know, 100 runs, like I think we made two full runs, right? Because the thing shook every run. And Ron was trying to get his license, and he eventually got his license, and, and Tom eventually got fired. And, um, you know, Snake asked me, he says, you want to run the car? I said, Snake, I, I can't run this car. Like, I, like, I, I'm, like, I got to take care of the guys, and we got all new guys. We got, you know, a new team. We don't even have, 
you know, all the equipment we need yet to run the whole year. And uh, this is like probably three months into the season. And uh, he says, what do you think about rolling? I said, well, hell, I love rolling, man. I worked with rolling before. And uh, he says, uh, Wes, you know, Wes Cerny, he says, Wes, Wes really likes you and he wants uh, to bring rolling in and he thinks you guys will make a good pair and, and uh, you guys will win races and, you know, you can, you know, he can be your consultant, you guys, and, and you guys can race together. And I mean, God's honest truth, like, uh, I was nervous as hell, you know, because, I mean, here I am, like, I'm a kid. I just got done working with, you know, Connie Coletta and Scott Coletta, right? And we won championships. And now, like, I'm in charge of a funny car team that, a, you know, a company like this is looking at me and I'm working for the snake, right? And the snake's going, hey, Nikki, what do you think about Tom? And I'm like, uh, I ain't sure about Tom. You know? <laughs> so, um, and, and this is, like I said, this is the truth. And, um, so, you know, we, we kind of did, did some stuff Wes wanted us to do. And we dialed some stuff in and, you know, it took a couple races, I mean, but next thing you know, I mean, we go three, three, four races, we're in the winner's circle, man. We, we won St. Louis, it was Ron's first, uh, Ron, Ron's first win in a funny car. Uh, it was a big win for, you know, Snake, Copenhagen, Snake is a team owner. And, you know, we started to gain some confidence, you know, like as a group. And, uh, you know, Roland was fun to work with because we messed with him, you know. He had, you know, one time I took his uh, credential, you know, and, and drew one of those, like, Hawaiian hats and put some slanty eyes and, you know, one of those long, <laughs> long Fu Manchu mustaches on him, you know, and he thought it was great. And, uh, you know, one, you know, when we warmed up, you know, Roland, we always said Roland had to have one of those flatter masks, you know, like it was a little flat. Cause it, but but that's the kind of stuff we would joke about, and Roland was fun about that. And, uh, you know, I miss Roland. We lost him, you know, uh, earlier, uh, like in December, a few months back. But um, it was a it was a good it was a good challenge for me to be a responsible crew chief, uh, really be accountable. Um, Snake, you know, obviously he. He, uh, he makes you accountable, and, uh, and um, you know, we had a good year. I mean, I didn't make it through the whole year, but, I mean, I made it pretty much the last couple races, and, uh, you know, Ron got rookie of the year. Uh, we won two races, had a bunch of final rounds. Um, so it was, a, it was a good experience for me to, to work, to do all that, you know, and, uh, you know, and then I moved on, you know, just to, I took a little hiatus after that. I went back to work for the family company, uh, Bonifani, at the time, Bonifani Clutches, and um, just wanted to help the business grow. Uh, I worked for Bruce Litt. That's when we got to get your, get our asses kicked by you every week. Uh, I finished second for like you know, a million years in a row. Uh, uh, you know, the Werner car just kicked our ass. <laughs> So, I mean, there you go, right? I mean, I would love, I mean, look at this. If Clover's watching, come on, Mikey, look at this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just wanted one clock and I actually got one. You guys got 50, but, uh, you know, for low ET. But, but anyway, seriously, you know, I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, my career is just, you know, I've been out here a long time and I, I try to enjoy uh, the people teach the young guys because that's what you know we we love we are Jimbo and I learn from the old guys and um, now y'all are the old guys now we're the old guys yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we and we are and you know we we used to think Dick was old and he's he was younger than us when we started with him so you know I, I don't even know what to say about that right yeah yeah so I know we're going to skip a few steps but me and you had a lot of battles and you know it was kind of a lot of fun though but it was a lot and I'm talking IHRA days for you folks watching um, he ran Bruce Litton's car and, and y'all finished second to us five times actually. I think five times yeah, yeah. Five times, yeah, yeah. we yeah. finally got the winner championship with Clay quit <laughs> <laughs> and he went an NHRA race so you know I mean the only like I told Bruce I said well we got a shot now you know so I mean you know, when you're second every year and then all of a sudden, you know, you're first, you know, um, 
it was, but it was a lot of fun. Though yeah. I try racing was really a lot of fun, yeah. and uh, it was a good part of my life. So mine too, obviously. But you went on to run with Dale and Alexis's car, and and uh, yeah, I mean before that, you know, like when I went back to Coletta's, I mean that was that was a big part of my life, and and I, I'll touch on that briefly. But Jim and Connie, they got me to come back over there. I I wanted to. Um, it was after we lost Scott, and um, our goal was to get that DHL funny car uh, in the winter circle, and that's what Scott wanted. Um, Scott was one of my best friends, um, Jim was too. Um, we spent a lot of time together, even before we worked together. And, uh, you know, my whole goal at Coletta's was to just take a team. All right, I got to be honest. We lost another battery, and I don't know where you were at. You went back to to make the DHL car well, in the winter circle. Yeah. So so like when I got back there, um, it was right after we lost Scott, and um, you know, and and that was a tough time in, in all of our lives. I mean, whether it was a friend or a fan or a family, um, we uh, you know, I lost one of my best friends, and uh, Jimbo did too, and we, you know, we. We always, you know, would talk about different things. Well, um, I'll, I'll cut through all that shit, and I'll just go straight to uh, when these guys asked me to come back. Jimmo says, "Hey, I want you to come back, come help Jono on the on Doug's car. We got to get this car in the top ten, and, and uh, it was Doug's dragster. And we're not going to run the funny car for a while, but we're going to stick you on the funny car, and you're going to go over there with Jono." you know, help Glenn and we're going to run this car. Because uh, Connie does want to bring this car back at some point. So the first goal was to, to, to work on, you know, work with these guys and fit in, you know, because they had their own, you know, agenda and they had their own setups. And it was, it was, uh, it was easy for me to fit in because I, you know, I can pretty much fit in anywhere. And, uh, once we understood what we what we were doing and what I had to do, we, we got Doug in the in the you know in the top ten and we got him in, in the final at Indy a couple races yeah. later. You know, he, you know, Connie ripped their asses because we weren't aggressive enough. But <laughs> you know, but anyway, like we definitely were having a good time and we got you know we you know we started off with uh, a group that had just had a you know, a really down time for, for a team, you know, in racing. I mean, obviously the, the greatest loss you could ever have, right? And, uh, um, and it was tough for me to even go there. Uh, but my job was to be the cheerleader and bring everybody up to a different level. And um, I mean, you can yeah. tell the rest of that, but like, I, I feel like you know, just having me there, it, it kind of brought that whole team back uh, to where we all could work together again, you know, and we, we brought the team to a different level, and that's how we built, you know, that team into winning that championship uh, with Scott's funny car, so, um, and it was all about Jim O'Connor and John O wanting me back over there, and just everybody working together it was not an easy task. It was really like, it was kind of, at times it was painful and um, because we were trying to do this, not just for us, but for our buddy, you know? Yeah, it was, um, you know, after we lost Scott, uh, you know, our, our worlds, you know, really changed and I'll, I'll never forget, you know, sitting there you know that night and uh, Nikki called me up and he's like tell me this isn't true and I said it is and um, you know it was it was a really a devastating time for for all of us and um, you know and you don't know which way uh, to go at that point and um, you know and I remember my my brother and I like we were like we hate this funny car like we don't ever want to see it run again and we were like pretty adamant that we didn't want to run this funny car again and um and connie 
gave to my brother and I, he says, water on that funny part again. And um, so that's what Scott would want us to do. And um, and I couldn't argue with Connie, you know, because Connie knew better than anybody. And um, so I said, okay. He says, you need to work on finding me a driver, you know, find us a driver for this car. We need to, you know, this and that. So I, uh, I had, you know, been talking to Nikki a little bit of time and, and I said, you need to come back here. We need you back here. And I told Connie, I said, I, I want, I want to hire Nikki back here. I said we need him here at this time, especially you know, the funny car and everything. And, and Connie's like, Yep, make that happen. So, you know, talked to Nikki and we got him back, you know, with the with the team. And, um, and he still let me help Bruce for the rest yeah. of the year. <clears throat> yeah, so I was able to go to a couple more races. Yeah. I remember that. Which was cool. Yeah. You know, but it was, it was uh, uh, so important for us, you know, because, it, you know, you know, when like, we lost our, you know, our big brother, our best friend, and, and you know, uh, one of the driving forces behind Coletta Motorsports was no, no longer here. And, um, you know, Connie you know, loses his son, and you, you want to do the right things for for Connie, for Scott, for Scott's family, and all that. And um, you know, having uh, Nikki come back um, was important because we needed somebody to to lift us back up and make us smile and laugh, you know, uh, more than what we were doing at the time. And um, and he did that, you know, and. Uh, you know, and I and I credit Nikki so much with like, you know, dragging us out of the, you know, the worst time that we were having back to like, hey, we're out here racing, you know, we're we're gonna honor Scott with, with his funny car. We're gonna, you know, uh, do the the best job we can for Connie, you know, for allowing us to work for him and. Um, you know, and I think from that time on, you know, because before that we had a pretty good team. You know, we had, you know, uh, Scott drove a, uh, before he went back to Funny Car Race, and we had, a, you know, three top fuel cars that were pretty stout. You know, with with, uh, with Doug and Scott. Yeah, and lots Brody. of wins, almost a yeah, yeah, lots of wins, lots of lots of stuff. We had a good team, but you know, we we went on some hard times. You know, from 2007. Um, you know. Losing Scott, uh, and then um, you know struggled a little bit to get out of it. But we really like, you know, when Nikki came on board, it like it brought a whole another dimension to the team. And you know, Nikki was there to help us any way could to get our team back, you know, up off the ground and stuff. I had to get Connie all the good clutch backs. Yeah, that was the most important. Thing. <laughs> Nicky got his ass chewed all the time about yeah. junk clutch bags, yeah. well, anything too aggressive about, clutch anything bags. Anything about the clutch. <laughs> but it, it was, um, you know, at that time we really started focusing on like doing things a different way, and, and it was a it was a great time. Um, you know, and my brother and Nicky, you know, took over running um, the DHL car, and you know Jeff Ren drove it first, and then. You know, had a, had some wins there, and then um, 2010 was a big, yeah, a big big moment because like we won that race at Memphis, and we we really had like pretty much a terrible car the whole year. Yeah, I mean it went it went down the track and it was slow, um, and we didn't want to hurt parts, we didn't want to blow things up because you know obviously that was a touchy subject, you know, with the funny car. Oh yeah. Um, and it was a struggle, but but we you know we worked our way up. Uh, you know we helped ourselves. Uh, you know at the time even Aaron Brooks was with us a little bit. Uh, he was helping, um, and we all put our heads together. You know, and I remember in Memphis, uh, you know, 
the old man says to us, he goes, how in the hell did you guys run 310 miles an hour? We're like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we cut half the wing off the thing before the final, so I mean, maybe that had something to do with it. But um, you know, it was a it, that was a breaking a breaking through point for us because uh, you know, getting that first win and we got that monkey off uh, off our backs at Coletta's um, um, for for the whole team, you know, for Scott and everybody, you know, so it gave us confidence that we could win and. Um, from that point on, you know, like we really never looked back. Um, we made changes. Jimbo did what he had to do. We did what we had to do with the team, and uh, we all worked together as a group. Like all our cars shared information. Um, I know a lot of teams at the time would be, you know, debating within their groups about, you know, sharing information, things like that. But our groups definitely, we all worked together. Um, you know, we, we had the Coletta way, and the Coletta way was we worked together. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, like when we inducted Scott in the Hall of Fame a few months ago, like we, we were a big family. And uh, the family part of the Coletta thing meant a lot to us because we were a group of people that worked together as a team. And we, we were striving for one thing. And that was to win races, and we we uh, we didn't just want to do it for Connie. We want to do it for ourselves, you know. And uh, you know, our goal, obviously, we we know we wanted to win for Scott, you know, yep. with that funny car. And uh, in, in 2015, you know, the group of the our core put all their heads together and. Uh, you know, we had a lot of people over there, like, obviously, Jimbo, you know, was the lead, he was our driving force. I mean, Connie, you know, we always got his opinion. Uh, you know, John O, and uh, we had Tommy D, and Del Warsham. I mean, um, you know, we had a real hell of a group of guys, like, top-notch crew chief guys, that all, we would all throw our input in on a Sunday morning, a Saturday, a Friday, whatever it was, for just everything in general to keep the team going in the right direction. And and I think that's what we had. Like, we had that family atmosphere. Um, you know, we'd fight together, and we'd race together, and we'd win together, and that's really what it was. And, and um, you know, in 15, we achieved a goal that was, you know, just a dream. You know, for all of us, I think, um, and it was Scott's dream. So, um, you know, we we won the championship, and uh, moving on from there, you know, it was all about just keep keep things going, right? Like, let's make it bigger, let's make it better, let's do whatever we can, and then we and we we definitely continued to do that, and uh, um, you know, and I think one of the biggest reasons why I'm where I am right now is because of the things, the way Jimbo and I share, the, the things we've shared over the years. We like to race together, and we want to win, and our goal is to win a championship. And if you don't win a championship, well, you know, you ain't shit. And I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? So, so I mean, we're out here racing, yeah, we want to win, but we're here to, we're here to win championships, right? Like Michael Jordan, like and Tom Brady, like I want rings, man. You give me the more rings you give me, the happier I am. So, uh, and I know that sounds cocky, but it's not. You know, like Alan Johnson, he's got the most rings. Well, you know, he's the best, and and we all strive to be better than than that guy or Austin Coyle, and uh, you know, we're all out here just trying to to live our dream and win races. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So what brought you here? This I wanted, team. I wanted to work with him, and I wanted to work with you. They're the two biggest things. I and I. Uh, number one, him and I have a lot of you know history, and you and I, I've known you forever. And I really, if I ever worked on a top fuel car, I don't want to get my ass kicked by you anymore. So <laughs> I'd rather have you drive it for me. And. Um, and then as far as Rick Ware, I gotta be honest with, with you about this guy. 
like I, I, I do my research, okay, and uh, I like Rick uh, as far as uh, his uh, energy, his, uh, he's a go-getter, he really enjoys racing, and to me, he is in this business uh, because he, he really loves racing, and uh, to me that means a lot, because this guy is out there trying to do whatever he can to, you know, have a race team, have race teams that are competitive and can win. And, and uh, there's not a lot of guys like that. I mean, really. Um, I, I respect him for what he's done, and I respect him for where I believe this drag race team's going to go. And uh, my goal is to, to win a championship with this team. And, like I said, I came to a team that already won three races. There was only like a few cars that won three races, and you know, Justin Ashley won six. So, like, this is a winning team, and uh, I want to race with winners. I want to go out there and know I can race to win, and that's why I'm here. And for you, Jimbo, you had told me there's only a few people, and obviously. The name you kept bringing up was Nikki, and you knew your brother was going to stay where he's at because he's not leaving Michigan, and you just kept bringing up his name, and that was that was like the uh, almost we didn't think it was possible kind of thing when me and you talked about it. Yeah, well, you know, you know, last year Rick came to me, you know, after um, uh, the Charlotte race, he says, you know, I'm not giving you everything you need. I'm like, what are you talking about, like? Got more new parts here than Clay's had in a long time. New car, you know this and that. And um, there's no, you know, I've, I've looked around and a lot of these teams have, you know, two crew chiefs and an assistant crew chief and a car chief. And he says, you know, right now it's just you and you know, and you've got a, a good group of kids, but you know, they're they're, you know, they lack experience. And we had the super sub. Yeah, exactly. Bruce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I told him, I said, look, I said, if I'm going to have anybody here working with me, I said, it's going to be, you know, Nikki, my brother, or Bruce, or Bruce Reed. And I said, and I just don't think that's possible right now. I said, my brother ain't going nowhere. He likes where he's at. I said, Nikki has a job right now. And, and I don't think that can happen. And I said, and Bruce runs his own business and his own, you know, race team down in Australia. I just don't see how this is going to happen. And then you and Bruce, of course, made that happen for us last year, which was, which was awesome because I got to work with, you know, one of my dearest friends I have in the world, you know, who just happens to live halfway around the world, and it was, it was really, really cool. And um, you know, winning a couple of races with him, but then you know, as the season went along, I knew Bruce couldn't do this forever. You know, he he's got a very successful pool building business down in Sydney, Australia, and you know, has his own successful race team with him and his brother and his dad, the legend Jim Reed. And um, about that time, you know, Nikki and I really started talking about this, and. Um, you know, having Nikki come over here, and, and Rick was, he, he jumped on board like you wouldn't believe. And uh, so we just started talking about, you know, how we can make this happen. And, and it worked out good for Nikki. He was closer to home. You know, he could drive to the shop, you know, a little, you know two and a half hour ride, whatever. And, um, you know, I was excited about it because, you know, I got one of my, you know, I. I just had one of my best friends working with me, you know, in, in 2023 for the most part. And now I'm going to have my other, one of my other best friends working with me in 2024. And um, it, it's, it, it's been awesome, you know, and, you know, we both share the same passions, our, our, our intensity, um, you know, our desire to win races, our desire to win championships and you know the, the best part is we have you as a driver you know and um, you know I think there's a, a great special bond 
that the three of us have. And then you, then you throw Rick into the mix, which he's a, you know, like Nikki said, he's just an awesome guy. And um, plus he prays for me, which really makes me happy. Yeah, you need pray. I do. So, <laughs> no, I do. do. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, and then, and then we go to breakfast and we talk about funny cars all the time. Yeah, I mean, Rick, yeah, I mean, Rick loves funny cars. But, <laughs> but I mean, right now we just got to really, you know, we have one goal, you know, yeah. and the goal is to, you know, put this team on top. And uh, that's what, you know, I mean, that's what we're working on. So, you know, and we, we, we've had our little bumps in the road here. We had a great race at Great too. Uh, couldn't have really gone better other, other than winning. Right. Um, so, you know, go through the hiccups we'll fix all the problems and you know that's part of my job and uh, you know just letting Jim know you know what's going on I'm, a, I'm his eyes and ears and uh, um, trust me we will fix everything and we will win and uh, that's, that's that, there's no excuse for not not winning so um, I mean that's just all there is to it so yeah we had a we had a, uh, a good car last year it was it was very you know up and down you know, you win three races, we were pretty flawless at those three races. And, you know, but uh, a lot of the other races, we, you know, we had our challenges, you know. And, um, you know, this year, it's like, you know, Nikki and I talked about what, the, you know, like he asked me, he says, what, what do you think we need to work on for next year? And I, I told him, you know, I think my car is good here, it's good here, but, like we're not real good between the 330 and the 660 for some reason, and um, so we just dove in, you know, uh, you know, to the clutch and the engine management, and all these things, and you know, we kind of figured out a different way we wanted to approach things. And, and Bradenton was was good; it showed us a lot of promise. And um, you know, we stumbled at Gainesville, we in Pomona, and, and uh, you know, here in Phoenix, but. Um, you know, we've had some mechanical issues and, you know, a lot of it is just sorting all those things out. And, I, and I've said this before, um, you know, I remember going to uh, Rick Hendrick's shop way back when, and we went to the Jeff Gordon shop and, um, you know, we met Jeff Gordon. I met Jeff Gordon. I met uh, Ray Abraham at the time. And I just remember this big sign they had in their, um, in their shop it said team and team stood for together everyone achieves more and and I believe that you know and, and as, as we tell our guys all the time it's like Nikki and I can come up with what we think is the greatest plan of attack on making the ultimate run you know on the racetrack that's in front of us at the time but if we all don't do our jobs that plan will never work and so we have to really like work hard at um, bringing everybody up, you know, to the level that we want to be to be a successful team. And it's like I told my guys, I said, you guys know how to win. You, you've done that. You did that three times last year. We did that with a pretty, you know, inexperienced group. And um, we've got one year under our belts. You know, we lost our clutch girl, Caitlin. And, lost uh, Zane, you know, who was our, our clutch helper, and, um, you know, but I felt like we could just move some pieces around and we'll be, you know, right back where we need to be, and, um, yeah, we've, we've stumbled a little bit this year, had some mechanical issues that we're, we're working through, but I think, you know, the the ideas that we have moving forward with how, how to run the car, um, it's pretty exciting. You know, because we know what you can do sitting in the seat and um, stomp the loud pedal. Stomp on that loud pedal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and we have confidence in what we're doing when we're, you know, making a setup. And, um, you know, and our, our kids out there working hard on the car, you know, we, we just have to uh, teach them more, you know, of what we do, you know, what we know and what we think, you know how things should be done and, and stuff like that. And we'll get better, you know, and, um, you know, we're looking forward next week. We've got Vegas and I told Nikki, I said, 
I said, uh, man, you know, I'm, I'm an expert on the four wide races until we get to the final round. Well, I said, and that's where he comes in because he's won, won one of them. Four yeah, but races. you're also the king of the mountain, so if we're hoping to go back there, but we don't know. You know. <laughs> yeah, Denver. Like I, I, <laughs> I've been saying that for years. So. <laughs> Jim was the king of the mountain. So. I, I thought that was funny because Tim Richards was really the king of the Yeah, mountain. but you took over. Uh, but he's, Dickie says, I took over. Yeah, you took the king. Yeah, but as soon as Tim retired, you're the king. <laughs> yeah. oh. that's, that's an honor. <laughs> well, this may be our longest YouTube video in history, and it's been fun. But you had a name for for, for this. What, what was that? You remember? What were we talking? What was the name for? Oh yeah, this is yeah, that's right. We're like, we're like we're like Donkey Kong. Two basically. donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> well, so and that and that comes from somebody. So that comes from Connie Coletta. And Connie would if you really. Um, I'm not going to say the bad word, but I'll just say if you fucked up, right? <laughs> That's not a bad word. No, 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 no. I didn't say it in a bad way. You know? and Connie would say, you know, listen here, you fucking donkeys. You know, I'd be like, he just called me a donkey. You know? And uh, and then, you know, so that's where we came up with that. So we didn't want to look like donkeys in, in Brayton, and I thought we looked pretty good, right? Maybe just straight up donkeys but late, late, lately i think you know we've been we, we have resembled donkeys now and uh we're gonna get get our way out of that and uh, uh we're gonna we're definitely gonna keep having fun i guarantee you that but uh you know our goal is to go out there and just fix this race car and uh win and that's you know you know we we fix our race car we have a great race car we have a you know we have a great driver we know he's won like four million races in IHRA <laughs> and in HRA, so um, we're just going to keep keep digging and, and uh, we're going to win. I mean, and that's, they know we're coming, so we're going to get it fixed and uh, we race. That's it's, it. It's, a, it. It's important, like, especially for Nikki and I, like, you know, like who we race for. Like, we've, we've won races with Scott. You know, our big brother, our best friend. You know, won races with Doug Coletta, and you know, and, and um, you know, been there with Connie. Won her, you know, won races and stuff. And to me, every win's got to be special. You know, and um, you know, I think, you know, when I came to work for you, you know, full time in 2022, um, it's special. You know, and you're one of those guys that. You know, are, are special to us, and, and um, you know, for a lot of different reasons, not just you know, on the racetrack and stuff like that, but just being around somebody that's a good human being, and being able to win with that person, and, and he has his own YouTube. Channel. Well, I know it's <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, y'all do this yeah. Donkey Kong yeah. racing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we can do our own. Right? <laughs> yes. You know, that's that's special. You know to win with that group and then win with the team owner like Rick Ware who you know is so passionate about this and, and win with these kids you know who are um, just a good group of kids you know that um, you know are, are just you know itching to, to do the best they can and it's you know it's our job to you know help and guide them and you know get us to where we want to be and, and um, it's fun. It's, it's fun. Jimbo, look at all these batteries and hot cameras we got here. We have done with. We're, we're back to the iPhone, and we're we're wrapping up. Nikki's answering hey, his wife. Well, yeah, my hey, wife. You, you run out of GoPros? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we baffled you with a lot of our bullshit today, Clay. So. <laughs> all right, so. Hey, Clay. How was that for some big bullshit set? That's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> So that was, I don't know how y'all will get, get that. That might be the longest video I've ever put on my channel, or it might just be part one of... It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. There will be more Donkey Kong racing. Well, we have, we have plenty of uh, stories to tell you. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, if you give us a 30-minute window, we'll take all 30. <laughs> What's <four>. up? <laughs> Appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. You will see these guys in the next one. That's right. <laughs> Bye.